All right, everybody. The Colorado Avalanche beat the Coyote, the Arizona Coyotes, twice in three days. The second one didn't come so easy. They needed seven rounds in a shootout and one goal, a beautiful one by Val Nachuskin, ends it. So they take both games against Arizona and now are one point behind Minnesota for top dog in the central a lot to get to on this episode new episode of locked on avalanche coming at you your locked on avalanche your daily podcast on the colorado avalanche part of the locked on podcast network your team every day all right kyle i'm going to do my best to get through this episode um without having any coughing fits but uh it, it a little bit under the weather, and if the Avalanche had lost, I would probably have been even more under the weather. So it was completely on them if I felt better doing this show, and they pulled through. So yeah, it's it's official. You have an upper body. Your day to day. But I, I'm gonna stick this one out. Uh, so the mute button will be my friend today. Um, all right, everybody, thank you for tuning in to Locked On Avalanche. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Thank you for making this your first listen of the day. That's always appreciated. Follow us on social media, L-O-P-N underscore Avalanche on Twitter, Locked on Avalanche on Instagram. Questions, comments, concerns, and opinions, Locked on Avalanche at gmail.com. And follow us on our YouTube channel over on YouTube. Hit subscribe, get notified when a new show goes live. And why not subscribe to our subtext as well? Uh, The the link to that is in our, our show notes, whether you're watching on YouTube or listening in your finely tuned car. All right, dude. Uh, the Avalanche were kind of a finely tuned, well-oiled machine for a little while in that game, the most recent one against the uh, Arizona Coyotes. But they maybe took their foot off the gas. A lot of car references early on in this episode. I know. And, the, and I'm not a car guy. That's, that's weird. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but, you know, they were up two to nothing. And just like that, Arizona can, you know, any team can can pull even. And Arizona did uh avalanche got one back pretty much right away on a power play arizona matches that and we go to overtime entertaining overtime nothing happens we go to a shootout pretty much nothing happens in the shootout for six and a half rounds because down the chuskin with a semi forsberg move to end it the only goal in the shootout and hey two points is two points i know some people are going to be upset because they let arizona creep back into it but you know, even when you have nothing to play for, well, I shouldn't say that. You, you're playing for yourself. You're playing for contracts yeah. and things like that. So you're always playing for something, right? Um, but it is Arizona, and you know, you looked good on game one against them. You put them away. This one seemed to be on cruise control, but they got back into it. You got the two points. So all's well that ends well. All right, look. All right, Avalanche fans, let's all gather around. Let's all let's all say what needs to be said. I am so sick and tired. Of games against the Arizona Coyotes. Yeah. It's the equivalent of folding laundry. You know you have to do it. It's annoying. It takes forever. Yeah. It's even more an example here. Like the, the Coyotes have nothing to benefit from taking this game to overtime and a shootout and playing like they do. And you're playing in Mullet Arena. You got the funky camera angles. You're on NHL <laughs> Network. It's it's just all of it. It's It's annoying. And then that's the tone of that game. Like the Avalanche should have put that game out of reach many times. They took their foot off the gas, lost a 2-0 lead, brought it back even. They had to fight to get to overtime. Shootout took forever. And it's not like the shootout goals were like highway robbery. It was just everybody was getting too fancy because nobody respected each other. Yeah, it was it was just so annoying. I'm sitting here watching the game just like finish the game (laughs) and this thing and you wipe your hands you're done with arizona great you get four points against arizona you should and then you're looking at where you're sitting in the central this is what you've been building on all year this is the tortoise and the hare race we've been talking about all year long where do the avalanche sit trust the process everything's going to be okay dallas can't hold on to that top spot guess what they didn't minnesota is up there temporarily Mm -hmm. This is a big week for the Avalanche. Like the Avalanche are doing what they're supposed to do, getting scoring from not just Nathan McKinnon. Things are working. Your gift looks good. This is what you want to see, but there are times where you just kind of get lost in the sauce and it's just like the process and getting through games like this. You're just like, we're almost to the playoffs. 
and this is almost garbage time, but the Avalanche have a lot to make up. Yeah. Um, again, getting back to, to Arizona, like I'm with you. This is just a team that I don't know if it's just because it's the Avalanche, they just get up for them, or if it's tough to say they match up well because they've had so much, you know, turnover there. It's never the same team twice. Nope. You know, I mean, it's weird. It's like the the Coyotes are a snowflake. They're they're, they're <laughs> never the same twice yep. because they're always making moves. They're getting rid of guys. You know, so, but for whatever reason, they're always in games with with the Abs, and we we talk about it all the time. Last year, they, they had a winning record against the Avalanche. Um, this year, the Avalanche kind of turned the tide in terms of you know what, what this, the record is against them, but they did not come easy. And in both games, the, the first one, you know, you, you were sitting there like, God, like the abs are really outplaying them. They're just struggling to find ways to score. And then they got a couple in and then they just kind of like slammed the door. Same thing with this game. Uh, they, they got two goals and it seemed like this thing was on cruise control. And we were going to be taught, you know, we were probably at this top of this episode talking about how Georgiev is now leading the league in shutouts. And then, bam, I think a minute and a half they score two goals and it just makes me think like, I don't watch a ton of coyotes. I don't want to turn this into locked on coyotes. You can, you can go listen to, to that, that show if you want to, and you should. Um, but it makes me wonder like, why, why do they constantly just give up, throw in the towel and completely do reboots? You have some talent there and you, and, and it's young. Mm -hmm. You have a lot of young talent there and, and Clayton Keller is so good yeah and and if he was on any other team you know we, we talk about miko ranton and being underappreciated in the league and and look at him like keller is is a force yeah and i kind of feel bad for him that he's got to play there but on the other hand if they keep him around and they can turn things around maybe he gets you know on the national stage a little bit more but he is buried in arizona right now that backhanded shot that the, the third goal the you know when the abs were up three to two after the power play goal and then you know the arizona comes back he just whips this shot out of nowhere yeah and and i don't blame georgiev nobody thought he was going to take that shot he's impressive i you know you can see the deficiencies in in the coyotes right yeah. they, they don't have a lot of offensive power uh prowess i should say they're, they're an off offensive powerhouse of a team they play really good defense, uh, and if they can just get pieces here and there, that's why I'm surprised. If you had a GM that was a little bit more aggressive and to bring in pieces instead of getting rid of all of them, you've obviously drafted well, and you've obviously you know have some guys there. If other teams want a lot of players that you have, why are you just unloading them all? Yeah, and understand. you you would think if Arizona had more of a mindset like Detroit, we talked about them last week about almost being there, almost building a dynasty. You would think that Arizona could benefit by building around Michelli and my boy, by the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you would think they could build off that, but they just, they just can't. And yeah, they, <laughs> they ship out players overpay for players that nobody wants on their team anymore. And mm -hmm. they have their interests in a weird spot. It's so, yeah, I just, all right. So yeah. Anyway, the, the abs, at least take both of these, and we will get to this week because this is a big week for the Avs in terms of games. Uh, we'll get to that in the third segment as well as our sound check and more to get to uh, with these two games against the Coyotes. But first, we're going to get to Athletic Greens. And what exactly is it? It's one delicious scoop of AG1 into a glass of water, and you are absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source superfoods, and probiotics to help you start your day right, this special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, your recovery focus, even your aging. And it's lifestyle friendly, whether you eat keto, paleo, vegan, or dairy free, or even gluten free, it contains less than one gram of sugar. There's no GMOs, there's no nasty chemical or artificial anything while it tastes delicious. And it costs you less than $3 a day. And you're investing in your health so it's cheaper than your cold brew or coffee habit. And you're getting all the different supplements in one. So right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with a convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop and a cup of water 
every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. And to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free year of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network. Once again, it's athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Uh, all right. I said that, you know, we probably would, if they didn't <clears throat> give up any of those goals and, and, and Georgiev was able to pitch a shutout, we probably would be talking about that. No, not entirely. I kind of am going to correct myself right there. We probably should be talking about how Miko Rantanen is in the 50 goal club and he's got two to go. He's got 48 because he got one in this game, um, which was the first goal of the game, actually. Mm -hmm. and on a fluky play, <laughs> yeah. uh, if you're a goaltender, finish the phrase, and, you know, whatever. But And, and it was like, is this the kind of goals that we're going to have to get? Cause you, and then the second one you got was from Bo Byram, who just kind of, like, crashed the net and just forced one home. But for Miko, he could have had two in the first game. Uh, they initially gave him one. On a Kale McCarr shot, they thought he redirected it. I think the fish, uh, the first one, they they gave it to McCarr, and then they changed it to Miko, and then they changed it back to McCarr. Okay, fine. So you don't have that one. And then uh, same game, the first game against Arizona, goal the uh, the goal is empty. They pulled the goalie, and he had a, a wide open shot, and it hits the ref skate. So he could have had two right there to bring him up to forty nine. This one still held true. We'd be talking about Miko Rantan in the 50 goal club. Uh, it's still going to happen. Maybe it happens this week. We'd love for that to happen because there's some big games coming up, like we'll get to in a little bit. But uh, uh, Miko, he's on the verge. And it's and it's crazy because it's not like he's changed anything about his game. He it's it's just him doing what he does mm -hmm. and going through the game that way. Um, it's just finally paying dividends, yeah. just the way he plays the game. And to see it knocking on the door of 50 goals, a member of the Avalanche and not named Nathan McKinnon, that says a lot. That says a lot to Miko yeah. and how he's playing this year and how responsible he's being with the puck. And it's crazy that the goals are starting to tick up once he starts getting himself back under control. We don't see him firing off at the mouth anymore and putting himself in the penalty <laughs> box. Like right. he's playing a lot smarter and it's, it's paying off and to get, if he could hit 50 this week, it will be a incredible milestone. It gets some milestone opponents. And, you know, also you have uh, Nathan McKinnon creeping up there on the 100 point marker as well. What do you have in this game? Um, where is, let's see. So you had the, in the three to one game, he had three points in that game. He had nothing. And, and he didn't, I thought he had an assist in this one. Wow, he didn't even have an assist. Okay. Wow. So uh trade him. Yeah, get rid of him. What the heck? So but what a cap hit. <laughs> I mean, when, and and it's good that the Avalanche are playing meaningful games still, right? Yeah. Because not only do do they they need these guys to step up and win these games, you know, along with that comes some personal records if you want to say which they'll say they don't care about and i believe that right now they just want to win the games it's one of the things when you look back it's like okay fine like miko i hit the 50 goal mark and for for nate i got to 100 points maybe they both get to 100 points at, you know by the end of the season but so it's like one hand washes the other it's mm -hmm. like if, if you play well you win these games likely those are the guys that are kind of like lifting you up they get their you know their personal achievements out of the way in the process and everybody's happy and on top of that you know, I, I think like a lot of like you're getting healthier now. Obviously, you you got Erod back in this game, um, who took another hit. And I, I think I remember seeing I think it was like Dater who put it up. Um, I, but there was no, I didn't see anything happen. Dater put up something like I think Erod's out again. Yeah, Maybe he he just came out for a minute, but he got a stinger, and it looked like something was going on in the collarbone region because he was hmm. sitting on the bench and he was kind of just like trying to work it out he returned to the ice because i saw him at a couple other points in the game but there was a there was a time mm -hmm. the way especially he was favoring it and rubbing i was like please don't let this be broken because that the way yeah. he was okay. kind of favoring it it looked like a long-term thing hmm. all right 
Uh, but overall, overall, the way that the Avs played in these two games, I'm happy with. You don't like, you know, surrendering the lead to yeah. anybody, especially a team like Arizona. But um, I, I thought, you know, as as a good as a defensive team as Arizona is, I don't want to make it out for them to be one of the best defensive teams in the league. They're, they're not. But they play some sound defense. They make you work for things. Um, I thought when the Avalanche needed to turn it on a little bit, um, especially in the first game, they they were they were dominating. They they had some pretty good long offensive possessions, all lines, all yeah. lines. And in this one, it's almost like Arizona said, "Okay, well, we're going to at least make some adjustments, try some different things," and it seemed to be working. They they don't give anybody a lot of daylight. They take chances, and when you do that, especially in a team like if you're facing off against a team like Colorado, you might slip up here and there every once in a while, and you know te- good teams can make them pay for it. It's kind of like the give and take that you have to deal with if you're a, a, a Yotes fan. Is like, hey, we play some pretty good, sound defense, but we don't have the offensive abilities to really outscore people. It's just one of those things where you know, in, in the end, the cream usually rises to the top when you're playing them. And that's for more or less what happened. Save for those few minutes in, in the third. It was an entertaining third because the first period was boring as heck. In both first games. Period, not, yeah, first game, nothing was going on. And then it just started to, you know, I don't want to say the teams got their legs, but they just maybe just made some adjustments. And that was an entertaining third period. And, 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 you, and, and I think you just see the avalanche just – the difference in in you know rosters and skill set between these two teams and it's a valuable lesson that the avalanche i talked about in the first segment how annoying these games are but there's a valuable lesson to be learned here when you get to the playoffs for you think you might have your opponent figured out and outmatched and on paper you should absolutely work them Mm -hmm. but there is something to be said about scrappy and every team in the playoffs will be scrappy and they will change things up on you and they will shift their defense around. This is a good lesson for newer members of the Avs and younger members of the Avs to learn on how to overcome these little adversities. Like Arizona had nothing to gain from playing like they did, especially in that second game. And yet they did. And it speaks a lot to the grit that they could build on in Arizona but something the avalanche can work on building and overcoming when it comes to games that matter, because this is going to be every game of the playoffs. Yeah. I thought it was like you're saying, like a good lesson in, okay, we're playing a, a, like I said, a sound defensive team. How are we going to find some goals? And they, they were work ethic goals and maybe a little bit of a luck when it comes to the, the Miko Ranton and goal. Um, But the, the Byram one, that was a, a hard-working goal. You're going to need those in, in, in the playoffs. You'll get some skill goals, and the Avalanche are still doing that thing, maybe because they were playing Arizona or one too many passes. You know, like so so it maybe that's it's a lesson this late in the season. Like, let's just play our game, don't get fancy. And if we gotta get, you know, down and dirty with some of these goals, we have to do it that way. And see, that's a fantastic point. I was watching the NHL Network broadcast, and Kevin Weeks brought up the he he used a, a nomenclature on the Avalanche that I haven't thought about so much mm. this year. He called us a very versatile team with mm. all of the injuries the Avalanche have sustained this year. Different players have had to learn different roles and different positions to make up for the injuries, and this team is so deep and versatile that they can overcome. Like they were talking about points by a defenseman that we had 50 more last year, but we are still leading the league by points by a defenseman in the NHL. And this team is injury depleted. And it speaks a lot to the character of this team on how versatile we could be. And these little lessons on being versatile, doesn't matter if you're Nathan McKinnon or Curtis McDermott, how you're going to overcome these scrappy little teams and how they match with you. It's a valuable lesson to learn now when nothing's on the line. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good point. Um, so we have a uh, pretty interesting week of Avalanche hockey. There's uh, three games. Two of them are huge. One of them, it's kind of like uh, where we've been with the Az for the past couple of weeks. It should go the Avalanche way. But 
Are they looking at the end of this week? And we talked about trap games, and I don't really like the term trap games, especially at this point in the season. I'm not going to throw that out there, but I just threw it out there so everybody else can say, like, yeah, it's a trap game. Um, It's a quack game. (laughs) But but, Hey, zinger. Uh, So we will talk about this week and then, of course, get to our sound check. But first, Built Bar and Built Bar March Madness is here. The Built Bar March Madness bracket is over at builtmarchmadness.com. And we know have you, you have your favorite Built Bar or Puff. And now is your time to make it count. So like I said, go to builtmarchmadness.com to vote for your favorite. And uh, I, I was looking at the website. I remember I said last year, uh, my my horse was the coconut brownie bar. Mm-hmm. And that that bad boy won the whole thing. I think I'm going to change it up this year. I think, I think I'm going with the mint brownie bar this year. Mm. It's got a tough first round matchup with the mint brownie puff, but I'm pretty confident in my mint boys. Don't sleep on the puffs, bro. I know, I know. So me uh, and my puff army, we are yeah. hard. <laughs> you and your marshmallowiness. <laughs> uh, And when you vote on your favorite bar or puff, you will be entered into a drawing where 50 lucky lockdown listeners will get a free box of built bars. Pretty cool. Not only that, but locked on one locked on fan will win a 12 month subscription to built to have built built best bars. Say that 10 times fast or puffs delivered monthly straight to your door. So run to builtmarchmadness.com right now and vote for your favorite bar or puff. And pick up a box. And while you're there, you can vote uh, every day in March. So hop in and support your pick. All right. Um, So a a big week, like we were saying, for the Avalanche. They turn right around and they're playing Monday night at home, I believe. That's a home game against uh, the Arizona. They're on the road. Uh, That's a road game. I apologize. They're on the pond. That is a road game against the Anaheim Ducks, right? Mm-hmm. So a uh, back-to-back, it just seems like the Avalanche the entire season has been a back-to-back. Um, so that's not ideal, but it's not that far of a ride. Okay, I think, and it's a it's a later, a little bit later start of a game, maybe an extra hour later start of a game. So, but, but you got to be ready for it, right? Because what's happening after that, on Wednesday, you are back home against the Minnesota Wild, who as of we are recording this, are in first place by a point over the abs. And then you skip over to Saturday and you are home again against the Dallas Stars. Big, big games coming up. And if you're you're the avalanche and you can win uh, Monday in uh, Anaheim, and then I don't – yeah, and then, and then if you win in uh, against Minnesota in regulation, you are in first place. And then you, you know, that's that's exactly where you want to be. And then you can have a stranglehold on that. And I saw uh, it was on altitude. There was a graphic of the Avalanche have been in first place. I, I gotta double check this for a grand total of one day this year. Makes sense. I mean, I guess after like the first game of the year with Chicago, I don't know. Maybe after everybody has a game under their belt, I don't know. I I, I thought the Avalanche were at least in first place a little bit longer than that. I know they haven't been for very long. But it doesn't matter. Like they don't count that at the end of the season. It doesn't matter if it's only been seven days. It matters where you are at the end of the regular season. And if the Avs can just go on a nice little run here, they're going to be in first place. And honestly, what you like first in the central, yes, it's nice. It's something to put up on the mantle. You won the central division. That's great. Mm-hmm. When you're going up against Minnesota and Dallas, this is the upper echelon of the division. You want to see how you match up with them, not just in this game, but what can you do? This is possibly a deep seven-game series. How do you match up with these teams, and what's deficient, Mm -hmm. and what's your strength? And you also need to scope that out on your opponent, because these are big games, not just for the standings, but these are going to be huge hurdles the deeper in the playoffs you go. Yeah, so here's my question to you. Um, so Dallas right now, uh, they have Dallas at 92. We're both at 92, I guess. Um, in honor of Gabe Landis, <laughs> yeah. 
Let me see where we are here. Let me get back to <clears throat> today's games. Um, all right. So if the if the playoffs were to start today, obviously you would have the Avalanche playing the Stars. Okay. Um, and Dallas would be would have the home ice advantage. So let's let's say would you rather be your first round opponent be Dallas and if you're the Minnesota Wild right now your first round opponent is Seattle mm. where would you go and you know it could go back and forth between who has home ice advantage between Dallas and Colorado so I don't want to get into that I'll just say like your first round opponent if, if you're in Minnesota you're gonna have first round against Seattle right because they're a wild card so you would either have home ice advantage against Seattle or it's a coin flip right now. Who would have home ice advantage between Dallas and Colorado? So would you rather your first round opponent be Seattle or Dallas? I'd rather play. Honestly, I'd rather play Dallas. Yeah. Just something about uh, something about Seattle and the hype and in the playoffs and everything being first and fresh and new. And uh, Dallas has been here, done that. Um, we match up well with Dallas. I mm-hmm. would play them on the moon. I don't care about home. I said, like, like, like we, we say we match up well against them and you kind of do, but that last game against them was horrible. Yeah. God awful. So I kind of yeah. want to go up against them to, you know, that's a divisional rival. Like those are the playoff series that I love. The and Seattle it's would, one, it's just, yeah. it's so weird. Like how would, how would that last? Yes. On paper, you would have the upper hand, but you also have that fresh, like vim and vigor of, this is Seattle's first push and attempt and the whole first and new and fresh. And how great would it be for a story for Seattle to make the playoffs and advance past Colorado? There's a lot of storylines that benefit mm. Seattle here. I just don't like that for the avalanche standpoint. Yeah. And I think Seattle matches up well against them. They got, mm-hmm. they got good speed. If their goaltending can hold up, they, they can be, you know, they can play with anybody, but that's a big if with their goaltending. So, I don't know. We'll see where it goes. It's just kind of where things stand right now. So, um, yeah, going to be a good week. Last bit of thing we will get to today is our Locked On Avalanche sound check, where Kyle and I pick one song each uh, that best summarizes the most recent game. These songs go over on a playlist over on Spotify. Just search LOA sound check. This is volume number two. And uh, what do you got for this one game, uh, sir? The game between uh, Colorado Avalanche and Arizona Coyotes. This is my send-off for the Arizona Coyotes, the Desert Dogs, the the Wagons, whatever you want to call them. Goodbye. Good riddance. This is a song from Psycho Stick. Dogs <laughs> like socks. And why this song? I don't... I'm it's trying a, to make the connection. Because the, the song is about how dumb dogs are like they just (laughs) like they find such joy in socks like there's even like a line like don't judge me like as it's chewing on a sock like arizona you were a nice opponent i like the kachina jerseys and you had to go and ruin that too you play in a tiny arena that just looks weird on television it makes me feel like i'm watching games on versus again um i i i am so happy we don't have to deal with you anymore this year goodbye arizona until next Enjoy the year. Socks. Until next year. You don't like those uniforms that they played in? No, tonight? I like the Kachinas so much more. I, yeah, those are fine, but I I, I kind of <laughs> like these ones. They look good. It's kind of simple. Just all one, that one burgundy style color. Just, you know, you got a little bit of white where the lettering is and stuff. Like, I, I, I dig it. See, I'm like okay I, I play so much of the online NHL modes mm-hmm. and custom teams. Everybody's, it looks like a custom team that you would get on EA Sports NHL online. So I'm just like, <laughs> eh. I don't mind it. Um, but I, I'm with you. Like they they are for some reason a, a thorn in our side. So we don't have to see them until next season. Uh for me, I'm going Rolling Stones. And uh y- you've seen the post or the posts online, the Avalanche, like with this, you know, they've been playing much better over the last month plus and just kind of like going up the standings, and you always see those people like, hey, we're we're here we come, we're coming. And now we are there. We are on the verge. You have a good week. You sweep this week. You're sitting pretty, right? So that's why I'm going with the Rolling Stones. And can you can't you hear me knocking? 
because that's exactly where the avalanche are now. Now they've been doing it for the, like I said, for the past <clears throat> four or six weeks, but now you're right there and yep. you are knocking on that door. So uh, that, that, that's, that's my pick. I don't think we've had a stone song on these playlists. Either. You will I, never I, get a stone song for me. Are you not a stones fan? I think they're <clears throat> the most overrated band on this planet. Wow. See, like, the way you look at the Stones is the way I look at Rush. I don't think Rush is overrated. I just don't like their sound. I, like I like the, the, yeah. I like the Stones, but they don't need to be on every piece of merch. Like, yeah. like I just think like they are way too merchandised. I'm just they, like, I mean, they don't. I don't. I don't listen to Stones albums beginning to end. Like I pick and choose like the songs. I think they have some good releases and stuff like that. Um, but. For for me, like yeah, like Rush is a band. I just I could never. Incredible musicians, some of the yeah. best musicians there are. Just it's the sound for me. I just can't can't wrap my head around it. So that's where we're at. So you might get a sympathy for the <laughs> for the devil song out of me, but you never know. <laughs> yeah, man, like come on, like paint it black. Oh oh, oh yeah, so good. It's so good. So good. So good. So good. Um. All right. So go follow those on Spotify, and that is going to wrap it up for today. Um. It was a struggle, but hey, seven rounds in a shootout. It was it was entertaining, if nothing else. And the Avs got the extra point. All right, that's going to wrap it up for today. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in and making it your first listen of the day. That is always appreciated. For Mr. Shaggy Von Doom, Kyle Sullivan, I am Chris Maselli. This is the Lockdown Avalanche podcast. And if I don't feel like crap tomorrow, we'll be back. <laughs>